Relative to certain areas in the finance industry, many CFA charter holders enjoy easier working schedules. Just like there's a really broad set of information that the CFA exams cover, especially level one, there's an equally broad set of opportunities and potential careers for CFA charter holders to get into. The total amount of hours that any specific career within the finance industry requires is going to depend on a couple things like the sector within the finance industry that it operates in or the specific firm that a certain role is with. In my experience on average, I think the jobs that CFA charter holders are landing in require less stringent working hours than some of the more grueling parts of the industry like in banking or PE. Now there may be some CFA charter holders out there hearing me say this and they're going, no way man, I work 80 hours a week, I work way harder than you do. And I don't doubt that there are some roles that CFA charter holders occupy that require huge amounts of working hours. So we're going to cover some specifics here and look at many careers that are commonly held by CFA charter holders and walk through what some of those working hour schedules look like on a regular week. I want to start out by making it clear that we're not talking about investment banking or private equity, which I already listed as two of the potential finance careers that require the most amount of hours commonly like 70 to 80 hours a week in some of those roles. Those just are not the most common places for CFA charter holders to end up. That avenue of the finance industry is much more built around experience within that avenue. So starting in banking and then going into private equity, internships throughout top universities, MBAs and top MBA programs, and working your way through kind of a separate funnel. Whereas in my opinion, the CFA charter covers maybe like the other 95% of the finance industry and really helps people get placed into those types of roles, which is why some of the extremely long hours that get worked by people in banking and PE are not driving up the average of everyone else's hours. We're not counting that group. I realize it's an extremely broad category and that many careers within the finance industry are going to fall under this umbrella, but asset management or buy side investing is a job commonly taken by CFA charter holders. Within this sector, you're going to have things like equity research and fixed income research. Those could be 50 to 60 hour a week jobs probably. You're also going to have things like pensions, endowments, or hedge funds. Those will be closer to 60, 70 year hours on an average week. But then in the wealth management, area where I work. I rarely work over 40 to 45 hours in a given week. And there are a lot of individuals working in that category that have CFAs too. So all those roles are helping to kind of lower the average hours worked of CFA charter holders. I just have to put one story out there too, which I'm sure can't be all that common. I interned while I was in college for an RIA in a pretty good sized middle market city. Their business model was basically picking stocks. They were like a small and mid cap manager and they managed non-qualified assets for individual investors and institutions, but man, these people, especially the partners at this firm, didn't work many hours at all. I was only there during the summer months, so maybe those months were not a completely representative data set of the amount of hours that these partners worked throughout the other parts of the year when people can be generally more busy, but I think you're going to be interested to hear how few hours they actually ended up working during those summer months. During the entire months of June and July, three of the four partners would not work past noon, and they didn't start before like 9 a.m. This wasn't like a trading office where people get in at like 5 or 6 a.m. and they're still doing a six to seven hour day. They'd work 9 a.m. to noon and like Thursdays and Fridays, they wouldn't come in to work at all. So they're literally working like 10 hours a week. Some of the other team and the staff around the office, they would still work a generally typical schedule, but they would still have Fridays off. At the most working hours, they would work a regular schedule Monday through Thursday and then just work a couple hours on Friday in the mornings, leave around 11 a.m. or something like that. That was typical for these people, at least in the months of June and July. I know I just said it couldn't be all that common, but I've also talked with another guy who owns a wealth management firm. He's the managing partner in a state where I live, and he takes the entire months of July and December off every single year, which I know is more like an extended vacation or something, but I think it has to be mentioned in this working hours conversation, because if you average the weeks across the year, having zero hours worked for eight weeks a year is certainly going to lower that average. So maybe it is a little bit more common than I felt like it was when I started talking about this. The, uh, the working hours in the asset management industry, specifically some some areas of wealth management are going to be extremely low, which might be favorable, but I guess it could be annoying too if you're someone who's really driven to always get a lot of work done and the partners and, and senior members of the team are out like 50 or 80% of the time. On the other end of the spectrum, I've talked with two guys who were associates at a pretty good sized university endowment and they were working like 70 hours and they had to show face on Sundays where they felt like they didn't even have much work to do. But because of the culture and the management structure of the office they were working in at this specific university, they had to be there from like noon to 4 or 5 p.m. on Sundays anyway, 
where they would kind of be sitting at their desk curling their thumbs, realistically probably splitting their time between the Wall Street Journal and Reddit or something like that. So just because you may be under the umbrella of asset management, I don't want to make it all sound really peachy. Again, go back to my starting point, which is that it's going to differ depending on the sector in finance and the specific firm or office in which you work. This is a really important conversation to be having because the difference in working 40 hours to 80 hours on your quality of life and getting to feel like you are living a life and that you have freedom and that you get to do things you want is just huge. I've said it before and I'll share it again, but I've heard from many kids who worked as interns in investment banking and they meant this in no disrespect to any cultures historically in the history of the earth who have been enslaved, but they said it felt like they were slaves. They're earning good money, sure, but that gets deposited in your bank account once every other week. What you have to live with hour after hour is being sleep deprived and getting told what to do and having to sit at a certain desk even when you might not have something to do when you have a little bit of downtime because of your role and your job and your company where you're required to do a certain thing with no freedom granted to you, that ends up making people feel like slaves. Their quality of life just goes way down. Compare that to having a lot of flexibility in your schedule, especially in the summer months. If you're leaving the office at noon and like running to the beach or going skydiving or even just having the ability to get your errands done after 6 p.m. It makes such a huge difference in your mental health and how you feel about your entire situation, your entire being really. So the total amount of hours required to work or typically worked in any given job is an extremely important factor co to consider before taking that job. That being said, you do want to be willing to work more hours if you have to, especially if there's a big project that's coming up and you know that in other instances you're going to have easier parts of your months or weeks put in the extra time when the time is needed. Try to adjust other things in your life around those bigger projects or immediate deadlines because it's just really valuable for the employer and for your team that you're working with to know that they can count on you to get things done. It's good for you, you'll get some experience and also be able to build up some thick skin by working some tough hours every now and then. I just don't think it's fun for anyone to have to do that consistently. It's not always super easy to figure out how many hours are typically worked in a given office if you're like considering a new role or interviewing for a job and you can't just really ask them straight up unless they're like a really forthcoming, honest type of uh, culture there. You usually cannot just ask your interviewer, hey, how many hours do I have to work if I want to come work here? So read as many reviews as you can. Hopefully you've done some networking and you know some other people that have had a similar role or maybe worked at that very company or maybe you have some people from a university background that have some information on it. Whatever you need to do, really try to figure out what that quality of life is actually going to be like for you. If you've gotten to this point in the video, it means you watched the whole thing and I really appreciate that. The YouTube algorithm loves the long watch times in terms of total minutes watched and just a percentage of the video. If you could also like this one and subscribe to the channel, both of those things help me out too and I appreciate them. The YouTube algorithm loves the long watch times in terms of total minutes watched and just a percentage of the video. If you could also like this one and subscribe to the channel, both of those things help me out too and I appreciate them. Loves the long watch times in terms of total minutes watched and just a percentage of the video. If you could also like this one and subscribe to the channel, both of those things help me out too and I appreciate that. If you want to support me on my Patreon page, you can check out the link in my channel bio there. As always, thanks for watching.